Hey guys, today we're making agua chile. You can compare it to ceviche, but your local Peruvians will probably hate you for that. So your choice, my dude. But regardless, let's get started. To start things off, we need to get these damn stickers off of our limes so they don't end up in our final dish. You can roll these to get a little more juice out and either use a juicer or hand squeeze them and feel humble around lime five like I did. We'll be using six to yield about a cup of lime juice. Time to bring up those soap eating war flashbacks. You can use parsley here if you're feeling vulnerable. One thing that's not negotiable is the use of chilies. Agua chile basically means chili water. So we're going to use some serrano chilies and some garlic. Add all of these things to the blender. Make sure you season them with salt. Working from low to high speed, we're going to blend these until we have a homogeneous mixture. Taste for seasoning. And then we're going to strain this through a fine mesh strainer so we can remove the pulp and the cilantro fragment. If you've been following me on Instagram, you should know that I'm pretty obsessed with seafood recently and I broke down a snapper for the first time on this day, so I decided to use it for this. Got beautiful skin, but we're going to be taking it off for this application because we'll be eating this raw. Making a small incision towards the tail, pointing the knife down towards the skin and working the skin instead of a knife until we have all the skin off. Next for the trimming, we're going to remove the belly portion, going along the entire length of the filet. After taking that off, we're going to address the bloodline. Being careful not to mar or mess up our main portion of the filet. We're going to set this aside and then get to cutting this in a similar fashion to sashimi. We'll cut a flat surface for us, take a little snack, and then use singular long drawn motions to cut these about a quarter to a fifth of an inch thick. Once we have that all nicely portioned, we're going to move that into the fridge until we're done with the rest of our prep. Dial in that finger guillotine and get ready to cut some cucumbers on it. Trimming off the curved end so we have a flat surface to work with. We're going for about this thick. So, uh, you know, do whatever you can. We're really just going to be shingling these for a final garnish. And there you have it. A quick tutorial on cutting mangoes include finding the stem side, standing it up on the tallest side, moving your knife about an inch off center from the stem, and then slicing all the way down. I'll be peeling this with my knife because that's just a personality trait of mine, I guess. Mango isn't traditional, but I think it's a great addition to add some sweetness to the dish. All things considered, it's a pretty tart dish, so I think that it could benefit a lot from having a sweet element. Using what we know of geometry, we're going to work this into a shape where we can get some nice cubes or a dice out of it. Next, we're going to use some red onion because it's a traditional ingredient for this recipe. We're going to add it to some ice water until we're ready. To take the pit out of the avocado, I'll be employing the method I saw on TikTok a couple months back and minimizing the chances of a second band-aid making it into this video. Yes, we're peeling this avocado, and yes, it was perfectly right because I got lucky. Now, my fortune aside, we're going to be slicing these as thin as you can. Once you've achieved that, we're going to shingle them and then cut them into a similar width to our fish. Now, we're ready to plate, but remember this is just a creative outlet for me, and you could easily throw all this into a bowl and eat it as is. And if you don't like eating raw or semi-raw fish, let it all marinate for about five to 10 minutes and the lime will cook it faster than you think. And if you feel weird about eating raw fish in general from the grocery store or preparing it at home, just ask your local fishmonger and they'll help you. I added some local dabble peppers here because they're beautiful in color and they're in season, so why not? Some microgreens because I was feeling saucy. And there we have it, a beautifully overcomplicated agua chile. This is the perfect recipe to end the summer months here in Florida and I'm super glad I made this. And for the record, this is my first time making it and I can't stress how easy it is to do. Well, that's it for me. And as always, do your damn dishes, have fun with it. And if you do decide to make this recipe, I hope you send it to me on Instagram. I'd love to see it. I hope you learned something. And if you did, please consider liking and subscribing. Hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss anything. And I'll see you in the next one. Later, guys. Peace.